So here in the sports precinct here at Midsummer, we're talking to the Carlton Pride people. Now, uh, how long has Carlton Pride been around? It's been around for two years now. This is the first, second full year that we're going to be running. Just started up in 2017. Now, there's, uh, there's, you know, when you come into the Carlton Footy Club, one of the things I hear that you learn very early is to hate Collingwood. Is that right? Oh, that's a given, an absolute given. So uh, please don't break my heart with this answer, but were the Collingwood Footy Club the first to have an LGBTI supporter club? Yes, they were. No! <laughs> Why? But they're not, well, they're, it was a good marketing exercise from their perspective. <laughs> we sort of stood back, waited to see how that would go and then... No, no, no we just, yeah, it, it, people, it had to grow from within the club and the supporter base and we had a couple of good supporters who got together and said, let's do this and then we've worked really well. Brilliant. So what do people, what can people expect when they join up with Carlton Pride? Uh, so Carlton Pride, first and foremost, is a place of inclusion, a place to be welcomed. Um, we were born because a handful of Carlton members really had no one to go to the footy with. Um, so it was a place for someone um, from an LGBTIQ background, but also from all walks of life to come and be accepted and have someone to go to the footy with. And we run social events during the year. Um, what can we expect? You can expect a whole lot of fun and meeting some awesome people. And speaking of meeting awesome people, do we get to meet the actual footballers? Yes, we've had footballers come along, particularly to, we have one big function every year and we've got a couple of footballers come along and also we have good support from the AFLW players as well. Well, that's fantastic. So we've come a long way in the AFL, still a lot, long way to go. How can people get involved with Carlton Pride? If you look for us on Facebook, we've got the Carlton Pride Collective there on Facebook. And go the Blues! Okay. <laughs> So here at the Bulldog Pride stall at Midsummer, I tell you, not my favourite club in the world, but not my least favourite either. So oh, yeah, no. Every, everyone has the doggies as a second team. I mean, you know, you gotta love the doggies. Well, until they won the flag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle, what what's your mission here at Midsummer? What are you up to? Uh, my, my mission is to try and have a little bit more fun instead of just working all the time. Uh, but today we're talking about Bulldog Pride here and creating safe spaces within uh, AFL area. Uh, we've got a negative view of the AFL as it is and just trying to create a better space for us to just come have a drink and feel safe. And how connected is the Bulldog Pride to the main footy club, like with the players? and um, the, the Amazing. Uh, we do uh, training with the players. Uh, we do really close one-on-ones with even like the presidents, the admin staff. I myself have actually done training with staff and players. Uh, we've also, working with the club, the club has actually created merchandise for us. Uh, we're actually one of the few clubs here who actually have uh, the, the club here with us as a stall. And we can't, we couldn't be more proud. Now you won the the men's team won the grand final in 2017. Uh, 2016. 16, and the women's league won it last year. That's right. So we we're, we're feeling pretty happy with ourselves at the moment. Feeling good, feeling very good. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the girls look. We still have the uh, the pride game again this year as well uh, on the women's uh, team, which is something again we're hoping to be a regular fixture within the club. Uh, so yeah, very very excited for that too. And if people want to get involved with Bulldog Pride, what do they need to do? Well, they can look us up on either Twitter or on Facebook uh, as Bulldog Pride. If they get in touch with the club or go there, the club can direct them as well to us. It is not only midsummer season here in Melbourne, it is also Oz Open time with lots of famous tennis players and all sorts of things happening uh, across the uh, uh, river, actually. Yeah, that way, that way. Yeah, Point the right yeah. direction. It's over there. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get you the right direction. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so this is uh, Vic Tennis. Vic Tennis and we're the Glam Slam, the first diversity event at a, at a tour event anywhere in the world. Proudly supported by Vic Ten uh, Tennis Victoria and Tennis Australia, these guys are showing what diversity means. These guys are giving us an opportunity not only to play on the blue courts, but also to be integrated within the Australian Open and play in, in just like normal players do, just like everyone else does. These guys are giving us opportunities we can only dream of. And we have to say thank you to Tennis Australia and Tennis Victoria.
So let's let's talk to Tennis Australia and Tennis Victoria. Why has this been important for your respective organisation? Well, it's important for us to uh, be inclusive of everybody and um, to support um, all underrepresented groups. We're very committed to ensuring that everyone has a safe environment, whether it be tennis or for whatever they want in their life. And has this been well received by the people that work with your group? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're really excited. We're so lucky to have people like Rowan who pull these events together. So we should be saying thank you to him instead of him saying thank you to us. It's a really exciting time for tennis and we're so excited to have him as part of the sport. It's awesome. There's a number of events, a number of different things going on. For example, we've got Ro Allen, the Gender and Sexuality Commissioner. We're putting her on court. We're getting a group around her. We're showing that anyone can play tennis. And if Ro Allen can play tennis, anyone can play tennis. And it's, it, we've got a number of stuff going on. And it's going to be a great event. It's a really, really great event in which we are front and centre, which is most important. Well, it's fantastic because this is the sports precinct we're in. There's a lot of LGBTI inclusion going on with lots of different sport, uh, sporting teams and different type of, types of events. So you bump into all sorts of uh, colourful characters as you walk here at Midsummer here in Melbourne. We're here with Katie Underwood. Hello. Hello. Hi. Katie, what have you been doing? How? How? Firstly, how is the the yoga going, <laughs> and also your music? Uh, sound meditation's going really well. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, knew, I, I interviewed you about it not long ago. It's fine. Um, yeah, it's been going really well. I've just finished my second meditation music album, so I'm really excited about that. Brilliant. But yeah, we're here today for Midsummer. This is our family tradition. I'm here with my daughter Zoe and Charlotte. Um, and we come to Midsummer every year. Great. What do you enjoy most about Midsummer? I love the diversity. I love that everybody can come and feel comfortable and anybody can hold anybody's hand or kiss anybody and feel relaxed. Um, my daughter's asked me, you know, what's Midsummer all about? I was like, well, it's a festival of love that we embrace that anybody can love anybody. Lovely. And Zoe, are you having fun today? What's the, what's the most fun thing you've seen today since you've been here? Getting tattoos. Hey, I, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. Tattoos are the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, thanks for chatting to us. A friend of Joy's and a friend of Ben TV's. Always. Enjoy your midsummer. You too. Happy midsummer. Yeah, the winners, the front runners, that's all. Yeah, the front runners.